the fitness craze that's sweeping the world, jogging. In the true Olympic spirit, it's the taking part that's important, not the winning. And it also reflects the spirit of the growing ecology movement, how to live a healthy life in an increasingly polluted world. Here, London's Hyde Park provides a patch of countryside in the heart of the city. But just around the corner is the city traffic. It includes more and more cyclists who've rediscovered a means of transport that's cheap, it keeps you fit, and it's non-pollutant. The same cannot be said of the rest of the traffic. In fact, if health is your main concern, cycling through London could be counterproductive. Air pollution from traffic is so bad that the cyclist may finish up with well-muscled legs, but also with damaged lungs and organs. The main danger, a potential killer, is lead. 10,000 tonnes of the metal gets into the atmosphere every year in Britain, almost all of it from traffic exhaust fumes. Recent studies show there are a number of hot spots around the country, areas where the population has an abnormally high and dangerous level of lead in its tissues. However, not all the experts have been ready to put the blame on the lead content of exhaust fumes. For example, the author of a British government report in 1980, Professor Patrick Lawther. Recommendations in your report. I think probably the identification of what we call hot spots, that uh, the vast majority of the population here don't have blood lead levels, which we would consider dangerous, but some do. So we really, the recommendations in the report, is that it's important to track these down and to see whether a child is eating paint or whether a child is being uh, in a household with plumber solvent water, uh, whether mum's filling the kettle from the hot tap or whether they're not having a runoff or whether they might be given some strange medicines or some eating some strange cosmetics. And you're looking for adventitious sources. You say this is as important as the lead and petrol? Yes. And, and all should be considered equally? Yes. Besides highlighting the household hazards of lead, the Lawther report also said a lot of the metal gets into our bodies via the food chain. At present, there's a legal maximum placed on the lead content of most foodstuffs, one part per million. But a recent survey by the Ministry of Agriculture reveals that farms producing crops with a high lead content are usually adjacent to busy motorways, and the crops which suffer most have a large leaf area. The ecologists then do not doubt that lead has worked its way into the food chain, but they insist that it gets there by fallout from the atmosphere, an atmosphere polluted by lead fumes from Britain's 19 million road vehicles. Critics also claim that commercial interests have been placed before public health in this issue, making a comparison with the reluctance of governments to encourage people to stop smoking. There, they fear the loss of tax revenue. The oil companies say that if the lead content of gasoline is to be reduced, it would cost them many millions of pounds to convert their refineries, and motor factories would need a whole range of new machinery to redesign engines. Powerful industrial lobbies appear to have delayed the whole examination of the lead issue. The sad fact is that the problem of exhaust fumes is not new. Here in the United States over 10 years ago, Americans organized a transcontinental clean car race. Means of propulsion included electricity, propane and other gases, even steam but the eventual winner ran on lead-free gasoline. Americans have been able to buy lead-free gasoline since 1975, and they've reached some interesting conclusions. While the fuel is initially more expensive, overall motoring costs are cut because sparking plugs and lubricating oil last much longer. 
The ultimate irony is that lead was originally added to gasoline to make engines run smoother. But with today's technology, the whole process is completely unnecessary. And only a few countries, including the United States and Canada, West Germany, Japan and Australia, have taken any positive steps. Back in London now, where the British government has belatedly announced plans to reduce the lead content of its gasoline from 0.4 grams per litre to 0.15 grams by 1985. Meanwhile, British children continue to breathe in the deadly fumes from nearby roads as they walk to school. The young are especially at risk. One half of all the lead they ingest is absorbed by the body compared with a figure of only one-tenth with adults. The result is slow poisoning. Each year, 100 children are admitted to hospital in Britain with lead poisoning and on average, two or three of them die. The effects of lead poisoning are insidious. A classic study was carried out in Massachusetts by Herbert Needleman, based on the analysis of lead in the discarded milk teeth of about 2,000 schoolchildren. Those with high lead levels scored significantly less well in intelligence tests and also in classroom behavior. Some experts believe outbreaks of hooliganism and rioting in cities can be explained in part by lead poisoning. There's also a threat to young mothers and their unborn children because the placenta is a poor barrier against lead. The child playing here is Ben. He and his mother used to live in inner London. Doctors have diagnosed lead poisoning which manifests itself partly in hyperactivity. This means he's often noisy, impatient and hard to control. And on top of that he has breathing difficulties. He's now on a special diet. Soon there'll be another child to worry about. Do you have any fears about the child you're expecting? Um, not quite so much as when I was expecting Ben had I known about lead then. Um, we now no longer live in a very high traffic area. I don't go shopping in central London and I will not be pushing my baby buggy along heavy traffic streets. Surveys in London and in other cities like Glasgow and Birmingham have revealed some lead levels 1,000 times higher than normal. Even an average urban environment has levels 100 times more than what's considered acceptable. Authorities that place children's play areas next to busy highways must be one of two things, say the medical critics, either crazy or criminal. A determined group of scientists have been drawing up their own conclusions about the perils of lead poisoning. At Reading University, Professor Derek Bryce Smith of the Organic Chemistry Department has been studying lead pollution since the 1960s. In the past, his warnings have been ignored, but with the increasing support of conservationists, he's just brought out a new report. The danger arises from the fact that lead is poisonous, as everybody agrees, and that the levels which we now find as normal in children today are sufficiently high to produce measurable adverse effects on the development of the brain in, in the young child and also in the child even before birth. In other words, in the case of uh, uh, present levels of lead exposure, normal does not mean safe. Children are already being affected. It's not some threat which might occur at some uh, future uh, occasion if we continue the present practices or it is, and it's not an effect occurring among a small tiny proportion of, of specially overexposed children it's an effect which is being produced at the levels found normally in routine surveys of city children in this country and in most other westernized countries what are you basing your evidence on this is uh, my files in this office are, are bulging with evidence on this point uh, this, this whole study uh, here published by the National Research Council of Canada, as you can see, it runs to hundreds of pages, details all the evidence on this. I mean, it's thoroughly well documented. I'm not saying that there are various aspects that don't need further study. Of course there are. But if we only had 10% of the present evidence indicting lead as a, as a hazard, uh, then any responsible government ought to be acting.
Mounting evidence then leaves no doubt of the dangers and the public debate is at last underway. But Britain's decision to reduce the lead content of its gasoline by 1985 could be a matter of too little, too late, and the poison could still be around in the year 2000. This would mean another generation suffering untold and needless damage to brain and body.